Isaiah 58 verses 5 and 6 says this, Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day of the Lord? Is not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? You know, the last couple of weeks we've been talking about fast is not a diet. And uh, today we're going to be continuing on that same topic, uh, but we're going to break into a message that the Lord had given me that goes along with this message called Five Things to Fast From. And, you know, so many times we so quickly think when we think of the term fast that we need to abstain from eating food or drink. But in reality, uh, God may have you do that, But what God is really wanting us to do and what really wanting us to fast from and to abstain from are from things in this life that distract us, that take us away from being everything that God has called us to be. So before we start go any further, I'm going to say a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you are. You are an amazing Father. We're so blessed Uh, to have you in our lives, God. And God, I pray even as we get into your word today, even as we talk, uh, come up to this topic on fasting and the things that we should be fasting from, Lord. God, I don't want to speak my words. I don't want to speak my ways. I don't want to speak my opinions, God. But God, I want you to uh, even share through me what you would have for your people today, God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now is the time to jump in. Now is the time to jump in with everything that is within you. So don't allow the enemy to lie to you. Don't allow the enemy to to pull you away. Don't allow the enemy to stop you. We must fast from fear. Every form of fear that is not of God. Those form, that form of fear that stops you, that, that hinders you, that distracts you from being what God has called you to be, you must abstain from that. You must say, God, I don't want to be fearful. God, I don't, I don't want this to stop me anymore. God, I don't want this to, to change me or, or even mold who I am. I don't want this to dictate who I am. There are some people, they live their life in fear. And they let that dictate every action that they take. And every step that they make and every word that they speak is based out of fear. But see, God has not called for us to react out of fear. What does he say? For God has not given us the spirit of fear. He's telling Timothy, stir up the gift of God that's inside of you. That's what God is saying to you today. Rise up, man of God. Rise up, woman of God. Stir it up. Stir up that Holy Ghost that's inside of you. If you have allowed your fear to stop you from being what God has called you to be, now is the time to stop that. Now is the time to rise up. Now is the time to be everything that God has called you to be. And yes, you know what? You may think I'm getting a little crazy here. You may think I'm getting a little passionate here. Because you know what? I'm I'm ready for the men and women of God to rise up and to bring revival to this nation that needs it. This lost and dying world needs revival, needs the Word of God, needs the Spirit of God, needs to see brothers and sisters uniting together in the Word and in the Spirit. Not allowing fear to stop them. Not allowing anything that has hindered them in their past to stop them. I want to encourage you today. It's so vitally important to overcome the fear in your life. And we all battle it in different ways. Different forms, different shapes. We all battle fear in in different ways. See, God has not given us the spirit of fear. And any time that you feel any hint of fear in your life, you need to rebuke it. Say, God, give me the spiritual confidence 
that I need to overcome this fear in my life. And He will. The Bible says, Knock, and the door shall be opened. Ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. It's Matthew 7. It's important. So if you're someone that battles with fear, and you have a lot of fear in your life, because you don't feel like you're good enough, you don't think you're adequate enough, you have things that you battle because of maybe things that you grew up with, then it's time to start fasting from the fears in your life and say, God, I'm not going to have it anymore. I'm not going to listen to the fear that has gripped me. No longer will it have its hold on me. But even, this, even as Paul says, he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power. He wants you to live in the power of the Holy Ghost. He wants you to, in love, the love of Christ, the love that, he, that, that God had, that He sent His only Son to die on the cross for us, and of a sound mind. Think about it. If you're fearful, you definitely don't have a sound mind. God has called you to have a sound mind. Not a, a sound... Whenever you're, uh, your, your mind is, a, is, a, is of your carnal nature, that's when it's not going to be sound. But when you have the mind of Christ, that's when you're going to have a sound mind. So we cannot, we should not, and going forward we will not allow fear to hinder us any longer. If fear is something you battle in your life, recognize it and fast from it. See, God brings these things out so that we can attack them, so that we can battle them. He, God knows what we battle. He knows. And He tries to tell us. He tries to give us hints. And sometimes we know too. We just don't know how to. And that's why you got to get on your knees and you cry out and say, God, I give this to you. I'm not going to let this grip me anymore. I'm not going to let this enslave me anymore. I'm not going to let this be the yoke on me anymore. I'm not going to do it. So number three, we must fast from fear. All right, the number four thing that we must fast from is our past. That's right. We must learn to fast from our past. You know, we all have a past, but God wants us wants to remind us of our future in Him. But see, the devil, he wants, to, he wants to continue to remind us of our past. He wants to remind us of things that happened in our past. You know, there's so many people that they that their past dictates who they are. They di- di- you know, you, you've got 50, 60, 70-year-old people that never change, that never get healing from maybe something hurtful that happened in their past, maybe something that happened in their childhood. You, you, you have people that um, who are selfish people, or you have people that um, are prideful people, or you have people that you have people that are just however their their past was formed. They have past hurts that created walls, and those walls created that go, grew bigger and bigger as they grew older and older, and they never allowed God to come in and you know, destroy those walls. They didn't allow the, the walls of Jericho to come down. And, you know, it, it's so important in order for us uh, to become what God has called us to be. We can't live in the past. See, Bible says, uh, without a vision, the people perish. And God wants us to always have vision. He always wants us to be looking forward and always looking uh, to what new things that God has for our life. And if we're so busy looking in our past or looking at what, what we used to do or, or, or how things used to be, then how can we ever allow God to speak to us and be able to see uh, where we're supposed to go? If I'm too busy looking back this way and I'm trying to go forward, I'm going to run into the camera eventually, right? See, God doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to be looking forward and moving forward and not looking back. But see, the devil wants us to continue to look in our past. Because he knows that if we're looking at the past, we can't be looking forward. 
And so it's important for us to fast from our past. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we, him, know we know him no more. Therefore, 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. The Lord told me this, never let past mistakes dictate today's obedience. I'm going to say that one more time. Never let past mistakes dictate today's obedience. See, the thing is, is we allow, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be going along and God will have something for us to do. And there might have been an area that we, we made a mistake in before. And we allow it to stop us. Because of what happened in the past, we allow it to stop us from being used by Him. You know, maybe you made a mistake. Maybe, you, maybe you're, you're a minister in training. And maybe the last time that you got up and you spoke, you, you screwed up. Are you going to allow that past mistake to always follow you? Are you always going to say, is that, is that going to always be how you are? Or does God create in you a newness and give you a new heart? And you know what? Sometimes you, make, you may make a mistake. We all make mistakes. But God's, he's, he's made you that new creation. So that whenever you do make a mistake, you know what? Okay, this is what I did. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to fast from it. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to flow in Him. I'm going to allow His Holy Spirit to flow through me, and I'm not going to allow my past to stop me. Just because I made a mistake in the past, that's not going to hinder my obedience today. We can't allow our past to stop us. So many people, well, you know, I would do this, or I would go to church, but man, I really got hurt 10 years ago. Well, <laughs> then you're never going to go to church. If that's what happened in your past, then you, then you should just never go to church. You should never have a relationship with God. Because you were in a bad relationship, then you should never be in another relationship. Right? You know, if, you've ever, you, if you ever had a, a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you had a bad relationship, does that mean that you shouldn't ever try again? No. <laughs> there have been many people that I know that have been in relationships that maybe they weren't the right relationship, but then if God eventually brought them to the person they were supposed to be with, and they found the love that they needed to, but if they were too busy in the past, then they would have never been able to find the relationship that they needed that was going to uh, make them into who they were supposed to be. See, we can't dwell on the past. We can't dwell on past mistakes. We can't dwell on past hurts. That's what we do. We react because we've been hurt in the past. We react the same way. So we think everybody's going to do that. See, that God is not that way. He is your Heavenly Father. He loves you. And yes, there are people who are in charge in different places that make mistakes. That doesn't mean everybody's going to make a mistake. That doesn't mean He is making the mistake. Just because you went to a church where you had people that might have been greedy, or you've been in a church and you may have had someone that, that backstabbed you, that doesn't mean that it's always like that. You can't put everything into the same box. You, you have to be that new creation. And you've got to have your relationship with Him for yourself. You can't rely on your past. You can't rely, well, my parents serve God, so I'm good. Our past is something that will try to hinder us for the rest of our lives. And we cannot allow it. We must fast from our past. You like that? Fast from the past. <laughs> We must fast from our past. It's so important. Because that's exactly what it is. It's past. Who cares about it? The only thing you should care about what happened in the past is that you learned from it. And that you moved on and you're no longer going to do it anymore. Right? Don't dwell on it. Overcome your past. You know? If, in, 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 if you're someone said, well, brother, I don't, I don't, I don't really know if, I'm, if I dwell on my past or not. Get on your knees and cry out to God and say, God, are there any areas in my life that I dwell in my past? Are there? It's just like, it's not fair. When you go from one relationship to the next, it's not fair for you to treat the next person the way that 
you think they're going to treat you the way that you just got treated, right? It's not fair to them because they're not that other person that treated you that way, right? And so it's the same thing. You know, God has made you a new creation in Him, and just because when you were out in the world and all these things happened to you, that doesn't mean that God is going to treat you that way. God's going to love you. He's made you a new creation. He's, he, he wants to encourage you. He wants to love on you. He wants to bring you forward to be everything that He has called you to be. We cannot allow our past to stop us. And that's also why that fellowship with the Holy Ghost is so important, because it will be that constant reminder of the goodness of God in our lives, rather from the past that is a constant reminder of our failures and our inadequacies. See, when you fellowship with the Spirit of God, the Bible says the Holy Ghost is the comforter, the teacher, and brings you back into remembrance. So it's the comforter and brings you back into remembrance of the goodness of of God. Whereas if you are dwelling in the past, all it does is remind you of the failures and the inadequacies of your life. That's what the, that's what your past does. So if you are someone that is negative, if you are someone that always dwells upon your failures and your inadequacies, you're someone that lives in the past. You're someone that has not overcome your past. You're someone that has not gotten healing from your past. And see, God is wanting to give you healing in those areas. If you're someone that is that way and you're saying, I don't want to be this way. I don't want to be negative. I don't want to uh, uh, always be about my failures or inadequacies or or things. I'm sick and tired of it. Then you can do something about it. Go to God. You need to recognize this about yourself. If if you are doing that, it's because you you let your past dictate everything in your life. And God does not want you to allow your past to dictate those things in your life. So if you recognize that, then what do you do? You get on your knees and you cry out to God and say, God, I want to fast from my past. I want to fast from the the, the old ways that have hindered me, that have pulled me down, that make me negative, that make me dwell on my failures instead of seeing the goodness that God has in my life. You need to get in counseling. You need to find a man or woman of God that can help you with those things. They can help walk you through and why is it that you continue to dwell on that past. And then you need a fellowship with the Spirit of God. You need to say, Holy Ghost, teach me, show me, bring me back into remembrance of the good things of my life. Because you know what? We've all had bad things that have happened to us. Nobody has lived a perfect life. Nobody has had a spot-free life where something bad or something not so great hasn't happened to you. Right? Everybody has. But that doesn't mean God wants you to dwell on those things. But also, in that same regard, we've all had some good things that have happened in our life too, right? Especially if you're a Christian... Remember that day that you gave your heart to Jesus? You remember that day that you got filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost? You remember that day that you were used in your purpose for Him? See, those are the things when you fellowship with the Spirit, when you fellowship with the Holy Ghost, those are the things that He's going to bring you back into remembrance of. And those are the things that He's going to be able to give you the confidence to stand up and be the man and be the woman that God has called you to be. So that when the past failure comes in, or the thought that comes in from your past, you can say, no, I'm going to abstain from that. I'm not going to listen to that. I don't need that. That negative thought, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to hear it. I'm going to fast from that negative thought. I'm going to fast from that negativity. It has no place in my life. God has made me a new creation, and I'm going to live like a new creation. That new creation that Christ has made me. Don't allow your past to dictate today's obedience. So number four... Number four thing that we must fast from, we must fast from our past. And the number five thing that we must fast from is pride. 
Pride is something that we all must fast from. Um, pride actually has different forms, different faces. Uh, there's different reasonings why some people are prideful or, or, or have a, a, a proud spirit. But every form of pride we must fast from because that is not what God has called for us to do. Proverbs 16, Proverbs 16 and 18 says, Pride goeth before a destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. You know, all pride brings is destruction. And there's a, the form of pride is, is it, one form of pride is overconfidence or thinking we know or pride in our, you know, say you, there's, there's a lot of people that battle pride because they're very intelligent. They're very smart people. You know, they're very book smart. You know, they, they and so they think they know. And so whenever you're trying to show them something in the Word of God, you think, well, you look at it in the literal context but see, when you get in, into the Word of God, it's not literal. You have to use the, a good balance of the Word and the Spirit. You must have a good uh, balance when you're getting into His Word. And so uh, uh, pride could come in the form of, of, of intelligence. Okay, So I, I'm not trying to bag on all you intelligent people out there because uh, us dummies are over here trying to be humble. No, <laughs> no. But what I'm trying to say is, is that, uh, that, you know, we can rely on our, 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 our physical intelligence. And sometimes we do that, even in our service to God. And there, there's, a, there's a sense of pride in that because we think we know. And, and just when we think we know, God will switch it up. He will switch it up every time. No matter how smart you are, no matter how th you think you can do it the best way, God will say, nope, and we're going to turn you around and you're going to do it this way. And this thing right here, don't understand. But if you are in the Spirit of God and you are flowing in the Spirit of God, you'll be able to understand, okay, okay, I don't, I don't know. But that's why it's important for us to fast from that that, that face of pride that's in our life. You know, the world teaches us to have pride. The world teaches us to be proud of being intelligent and doing this. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to tell you to go out there and be stupid. <laughs> I'm not trying. But you know, the thing is, is that the most important thing is for you to be obedient to His will, no matter what. You know, God has given us all different levels of intelligence. And, and some of us strive... Uh, for that level of intelligence greater than others. And, that, and that's just the way it is. Uh, but you've got to understand, you can't take pride in that intelligence in the essence of where you think you know better. Because see, a lot of times, God can't get to certain people that are too prideful because they think they know. Where they don't have a heart that is humble that says, man, maybe I don't know. You know, because maybe, and, and, and you know, and sometimes the, that form of pride also T turn, takes on another mask or another face of embarrassment. And when I say embarrassment, uh, they so badly don't want to be wrong, you know, so they, they buck up and they have pride and, or, or, or they won't step out there because, because they, they, they don't want people to know that they don't know or, or that they're in the wrong. Um, but in God, it's not about who's right or who's wrong. It's about obedience. It's about being obedient to His voice. See, God's not looking for the smartest person. God is not looking for the most intelligent person. God is looking for the, the most humble person that will bow down and say, God, here I am. I want to hear your voice. I want to speak your word. I want to do what you've called me to do. You know, and that's why it's important for us to fast from pride. Because the pride of our flesh and the pride of our intelligence, the pride of our carnal mind will hinder us and will distract us from what God really wants us to do. And see, and that's what happens. We'll, we'll, if you're someone that is like that, you'll allow pride to come in. You'll be given a task and you'll automatically, instead of praying and saying, God, how do you want me to do this? You just do it because you know you've done it a million times and you'll do it and you'll do it the same way and you know how it works. But see, God, every single time, wants to see if you're saying, God, I give this to you. And I know I've done it this way this time. I know I've done it this way this other time. 
What way do you want me to do it? Sometimes it's hard for us to do that because of the pride. (laughs) Because we just think we know, and it's so easy to just fall into that. But see, we gotta we have to fast from that part. The, the pride of our carnal mind and say, God, I don't want to I don't want to say I know. I want to be in your will and whatever it is, however you want me to do this task, however you want me to um, perform the function that you've called me to perform. Let me do it in your spirit. Let me do it with a humble mind. Let me do it with a contrite heart. Say, God, here I am. It's so important that we do that. So, I know this that 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 section was a little bit little bit smaller than the other ones, but it's so vitally important that we find the areas in our life that we need to fast from. I've given you five today, from being comfortable from being lazy, from being fearful, from our past, and from our pride. Whatever it is in your life, whatever area that distracts you from being what God has called you to be, whatever area of your life that hinders you from reaching your purpose and your calling in Him, find out whatever that is fast from it. Fast from it. Abstain from it. Because that's what's going to make you and mold you into the man or the woman that God has called you to be. So I want to encourage you today. We're not on this earth for very long. And while we're here, it's time to do something for Jesus. It's time to not waste any more time. It's time to rise up and grab hold of the calling and grab hold of the purpose that God has for your life. And you do that by fasting from the things that stop you from doing that. Because there's a life full of things trying to stop you, trying to hinder you, trying to slow you down. Be everything that God has called you to be today. Be encouraged. And know that He loves you and He's there for you. Um, I'm so excited about what God is doing. I am so excited about what God is doing uh, in Revival for Christ. I'm so excited about what God is even doing in our young people. Uh, you got to check them out. They actually just started a YouTube page themselves. That's uh, Revelation Generation. Um, and go check them out on YouTube. Uh, they're they're starting to do a, a, a show as well. And they also have a newsletter. Um, man, I'm, I'm just excited about the, the, the future of our church at Revival for Christ. Um, amazing uh, uh, young people for God. And I know they're going to be doing a, uh, a, a youth revival soon, coming soon to Altus. And I'm excited for them. And uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just thankful. God is a great God. And uh, there's also uh, a lot of different... Um, uh, personal things that are changing in my life. Um, maybe by the next podcast, I'll be able to tell you what that is. <laughs> but for the but for now, uh, some of you know me know know what that is, and others. Uh, the next live, the next podcast that I film, I will definitely share some of those things that are happening. But uh, I just want to encourage you guys today. Um, you know, we can't we can't end a podcast without talking about the Holy Ghost, and of course. We've talked about the Holy Ghost a lot today, and eventually we're going to do a podcast on the Holy Ghost, the requirement. (laughs) Frank has been like, come on, Ryan. But but I do have to to be sensitive to spirit and hear when God will will make that time and it will happen, I promise. But if you don't know what the Holy Ghost is, we're going to lock the doors because we ain't going nowhere until we talk about the Holy Ghost. You don't have the Holy Ghost, you need the Holy Ghost. If you got the Holy Ghost and you don't use the Holy Ghost, you better start using the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is so important for your life. 
If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you don't know what the Holy Ghost is, ask your pastor, ask the men and women of God around you. If they don't know, then find people that do know about the Holy Ghost. Did you know that the Holy Ghost is the only, uh, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost is the only unforgivable sin in the Bible? You can blaspheme God, you can, you can kill a man, you can do all these things, but the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And many people don't even know what the Holy Ghost is. They, they, just, they know it's the part of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But what does the Holy Ghost do? Find out. We're going to keep talking about it, and we're going to eventually go in depth of what the Holy Ghost does. But in the meantime, go check it out all throughout the Scriptures. If you've got a Thompson Chain Bible, look up Holy Ghost. You know, if you want to be real lazy about it, get your cell phone, put in Holy Ghost, in the in the Google machine, <laughs> in the Google, and uh, there will be a lot of different things you can find. Say, you know, Google, show me how many scriptures it talks about the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. You'll you'll be amazed. So anyway, guys, I love you guys so much. We thank you so much for tuning in uh, to our podcast of season two, um, episode four. Uh, episode 4A, 4B, 4C. <laughs> There's going to be a couple of them, I think. <laughs> but uh, we thank you guys for tuning in today. Make sure you go on to YouTube and comment, like, share, tell everybody about the podcast. Uh, we've been doing it for over a year now. Uh, I think, yeah, we've been taping for over a year now. And uh, we're so excited. Um, we made it through a whole year. We're in this season two. And we hope that you guys are enjoying um, the podcast. We love you guys so much. Uh, remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Join us next time for another edition of the Adventures in the Great Commission. Now is the time to jump in! Now is the time to jump in with everything that is within you!